Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another tarot deck review. This deck that we're going to look at is not quite a tarot deck. I would consider it more of a oracle maybe deck. I don't know. It's quite strange and unusual. So we are going to take a look at the forbidden wisdom of the infernal dictionary or the Damon tarot. I believe I'm saying that right. <clears throat> by Ariana Osborne and their original illustrations by Luis or Louis Breton from Jacques Auguste Simon Callen de Plancy's <laughs> Dictionnaire Infernal. So the Infernal Dictionary. Um, so this is about uh, like demon entities, that sort of a thing. Um, kind of interesting. We're going to kind of like we're playing on the Halloween theme here again with the decks. This was 1995. Um, this is published by Sterling Ethos. Um, it's 69 cards. So again, that's why I'm saying it's not quite a tarot deck. There's no real structure to it. So I would consider it more of an Oracle deck. Um, and it does come with a 160 page book, uh, with the interpretations of each card. So I'll go ahead and read you what this little paragraph says. It says for the 1863 edition, a uh, sixth edition of the dictionary infernal, a volume filled with entries about magic and the occult, demonologist Jacques Auguste Simone Colin de Plancy commissioned over 500 unique engravings, including 69 signed illustrations by Louise Breton, mostly compelling portraits of named demons or demons, I'm assuming. Now, author Ariana Osborne has created a matched set of 69 cards out of Breton's work and written a companion book of illustrated entries for each. These entries detail each daemon's attributes compiled not only from the dictionary, but from a variety of other sources. Osborne's own interpretations and insights into the subject of each card and focus meanings to use in a traditional one card draw or six card spread. The next best thing to dragging a daemon into your living room and answering all your questions. So this is not everybody's cup of tea. I just kind of wanted to um, open this up so you guys kind of see what it is and kind of what it entails. Um, I am borrowing this, so this is not mine personally. Um, this isn't personally what I would um, pick for myself, but I kind of wanted you guys to get a look at what it is, what it's all about in case this is your cup of tea. So it's beautifully packaged. I really like how they did it. It really sets the tone for what this deck is about. So it is a box and you open up the box and it is a beautiful thick guidebook here. And I was looking through this and I didn't see anything really, um, about spreads here. Um, but let's see. It says the divination sections are the next best thing to dragging a demon into your living room to answer all of your questions. The cards are not a traditional tarot deck. There is not a lot of correlation with the major arcana and there are no suits. Nevertheless, divination can be done with cards, dominoes, runes, dice, nursery rhymes, or flower petals, and it can be done with this deck too. I've always thought that cardomancy is more about allowing the focus on specific thoughts to guide the mind than it is about memorizing card meanings and reciting them back. So I've refined my thoughts and interpretations from the inspiration sections into focused meanings that you can use in your own spreads. Okay. Because the deck is not made of a traditional tarot cards, I've done some experimenting. What I found is that this deck works best as a divination tool with other or with either a traditional one card draw or a somewhat new six card spread for a single card draw ask a question, shuffle the deck and pull out an answer. It may not immediately be apparent what the answer is, but thinking about the meaning of the card should lead you there most of the time. There are a few tricksters in the deck, so it's fair to decide one card isn't working for you and draw another. The six card spread is useful for a longer and more complicated question. How to deal with a particular problem or situation, for instance. Moving from top to bottom, lay down five cards face up, one card at the top, followed by a row of three cards, one directly below the first and one on each side, two, three, four, and the fifth card centered below the row of three to form a cross. Okay, finally lay the sixth card face down and the right 
to the right of the entire spread. Okay. Okay. So that's where the spread is. All right. Okay. So there's that. I won't bore you with all of it, but I just wanted to see if there was anything else that is interesting in this little preface here. Uh, one man's God is another man's demon in this book and deck. You will find many demons that have almost always been considered just demons during the 16th century. The Dutch demonologist Johannes Weir compiled a least a list of the ranking demons of hell. Um, the false monarchy of demons as an appendix to his treatise, uh, I'm not even going to uh, pronounce that. It says on the illusions of demons and on spells and poisons. Okay. Many of the spirits listed in this would later appear in the somewhat better known, uh, the lesser key of Solomon. And many are also listed here, um, as proof that demons were not only real, but also evil. Okay. Let's see. However, I'm shooting for fair and balanced reporting. If you will, this means that yes, I will tell you that if a demon is rumored to be particularly murderous, but I won't be ascribing any evil intent to uh, what appear to be otherwise good natured folk. If you choose to believe that anything that's not human is terrible, that's up to you, but I have no such prejudices. Um, <clears throat> okay, so basically there's a list of demons in here and it gives you annotation of what it is, um, inspiration, and then the divination for it. Focus on science, especially medicine and dietary concerns. Okay, so like she was saying, if you believe they're evil, that's good. Um, that's your uh, prerogative is what I wanna say. So there's a bunch of them in here and it's beautifully illustrated. There, I mean, there's Lucifer right there. Um, and it is color in here and it's a good thick book. If this is what you are looking for, awesome. This is why I do these um, reviews because just because it's something I may not like doesn't mean it's something you may not like or you know, vice versa, whatever it is. So you have the little cards in their spot here. And I'm just gonna go through maybe one section here because I don't feel like we need to go through all of them. But just to give you kind of a, um, an idea as to what is in the deck here. So this is the back and it basically says the car, uh, the infernal cards. So that is pretty scary, but you know, this is Halloween. <laughs> okay. So basically they're just the pictures of the daemons here and it gives you a description of what that demon is. The cards are good, you know, good thickness. They're thin, but they're not terribly thin. I'm interested to see how they shuffle. I mean, the pictures are pretty, pretty different. And, you know, like I said, if this is something you're into, I think you might like it. It's a different way of um, divination for sure. And I think it would be good too for um, shadow work if you're pulling one card just to see where maybe you need to focus. Um, that could be a, a good start for that. Um, if you guys don't scare easy, also very good. Brooms. Okay, this says brooms are an old and powerful symbol and a tool of witchcraft. They are traditional vehicles for magical travel, essential elements of various rituals, and useful for sweeping up dust. All right. So they have that kind of thing in here as well. So that is really neat. Looks like a flying dog. I kind of love that. Kali. I mean, not all of them are very frightening, which is nice. You get to kind of have a breather. Severus, oh. This one says, um, is a marquee of hell with 29 military units under his command. He may appear in the guise of a raven or a three-headed dog, and his voice is hoarse. All right. I mean, I feel like it has a sense of humor, and I like that. It's not too heavy of a feeling. It's very, um, I mean, it's heavy, but it's not that heavy. 
just because of, I feel like it's the subject matter it, that it feels like the energy is a little heavy. But again, this also isn't my deck. So um, I don't even think it's been used. So that is basically what half of the deck looks like. We're gonna sit here and kind of shuffle it and see how it shuffles. Not bad. It's very nice. It's very flexible. Okay. Yeah, it shuffles just great. I don't feel like I'm gonna destroy the cards. Yeah, I like it. So basically, what I'll do now is I'll just, instead of opening up that other side, I'll just take a, a card from here. I'll just pull a card real fast and then we'll look up the meaning and kind of um, see how a one card draw would work. Okay, or one will pop out for me. Okay, so we have Behemoth. This is the Lord of Gluttony and the High Cupbearer of Hell but some demonologists claim he is nothing more than a terrible but simple beast. He may look like an elephant or some extinct creature. <laughs> okay, so then we would go into the book and search for Behemoth. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Oop, geez. Okay. There we are. Okay, so annotation. The word behemoth has become so much a part of the language that you probably instantly thought of some sort of huge animal. And quite right, behemoth is an ancient word, possibly of Egyptian or Hebrew origin, meaning any large beast of burden. In the Old Testament, behemoth was the name given to a great and ancient beast, one of a kind in the world, that eats grass like an ox, but is so large and powerful that it cannot be tamed. Because of behemoth's great size and power as a demon, he was given domain over the sin of gluttony and described as a cupbearer in hell. Because behemoth was the only one of his kind, there is some disagreement between demonologists as to his exact appearance, but he is generally illustrated as resembling an elephant or other large land animal, while his sister Leviathan is portrayed as a whale. Inspiration, behemoth the beast is a symbol of strength and virility, but behemoth the demon is an illustration of excess. That is a clear example of how the same traits, strength and a high intake of food to sustain that great strength, can be good and acceptable in one situation and demonized in another. If behemoth is considered a dumb animal, he is only acting on his nature. But if he is considered to have a higher intelligent, intelligence, his excess is considered sinful. So divination would be, be aware of considering natural instincts and actions in moderation as things to be scorned or mocked. Some territorial feelings, hungers, and instincts are perfectly reasonable human reactions as long as we think before acting on them. Okay, so you know what? I don't hate this. I really don't. I feel like there's some humor. I feel like this is, um, you know, pretty well done. Uh, you get a history for, it's kind of like having your own demonology book at home with you in your pocket. Um, it's still a divination tool. It's kind of like an oracle card. Um, it's definitely different. I feel like it's creative. I feel like if this is your cup of tea, then by all means, you would enjoy this. Um, there is some humor. There is some, um, I mean, it's not dark and dreary. It's definitely for a certain kind of demographic. I would say not everybody would be drawn to this, but if you are, I think this is fantastic. For $20, it's not your average um, tarot deck, but I mean, it could work just as well as an Oracle deck for you. Um, again, it's it has to be your cup of tea, but I feel like that's the same way with most tarot decks or most Oracle decks it's got a call to you, right? So, you know, the cards are great. The illustrations are great. They shuffle fantastically. You get a good um, sense of where this deck will take you. And the guidebook is really um, explanatory. And, you know, you get, a, I mean, one card draw, that would be perfect. 
Um, and then they do, she does describe a um, six card uh, spread in there for you, which would be easy to do without pictures. So for $20, I don't hate it. I think it's great. I think it's something that um, if you're drawn to it, by all means, pick it up. Um, it's a great little uh, box set. So it's, going to hold up well if you keep it in its original packaging. I will list where I know you can find it down in the description box below. What do you guys think about this? Is this something you're drawn to or are you um, turned off by the subject matter? Is this something right up your alley or um, uh, are, are you steer, steering clear of it? Um, I think, you know, it's not something I would be picking up right away, but um, I'm glad I got to borrow it and I'm glad I got to dive deep into it and see if I would like it. Um, and that's kind of what I like doing with these videos is um, bringing you guys the, the decks and opening them up and seeing what your guys' thoughts are on them. Because sometimes when we um, see them in the stores and they're hanging out like this, it's kind of hard to tell if we would really enjoy them or not, especially, um, you know, how are, how big are the cards or um, what's the card stock like? This kind of gives you a little overview and that way you can decide for yourself before going out and purchasing it and possibly being disappointed. So if this helps you in any way, let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on these as well. Um, I'm very interested to know. And if you have not yet hit the notification bell, go ahead and do that as well because I do not have a um, set upload schedule and this way you'll never miss a video from me. If you um, have not yet subscribed, feel free to do so because I have a lot more um, deck reviews and uh, tarot pick a card readings, craft videos, you name it. My channel is kind of all over the place and I kind of like it that way. <laughs> So if that sounds right up your alley, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to have you here. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. This is so much fun. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.